Hello and welcome to It's Only Electric. It's time for another full review. This time it's the updated 2024 Volkswagen ID4. Is this car finally worth buying? Let's look into that. But it has a upgraded powertrain, updated interior, new software. But let's start with the exterior and the specifications. So this is the best selling fully electric car from Volkswagen. It's a mid-sized SUV measuring almost 4.6 meters in total length with a wheelbase of 2.7 meters, curb weight 2.2 tons. Riding on the same battery pack, the big battery pack as the older version, 82 kilowatt hours of gross capacity, 77 net capacity, NMC battery, so don't charge it to 100% too often. So let's move on to one of the biggest updates, and that's the rear drive unit. This is the pro version, meaning that it's only driving on the rear wheels, so the drive unit is placed on the rear axle. In this case, delivering 286 horsepower instead of 204. That's 84 horsepower more, 545 newton meters of torque compared to 310, so more than 200 newton meters extra. 0 to 100, 6.7 seconds compared to 8.5, almost two seconds faster. Top speed, 180 kilometers per hour. And it's not only more powerful, it's also more efficient. That's a nice equation to solve. Meaning that it will deliver slightly more range than the older version, despite having more power. This one though, is driving on the 20 inch wheels, extra equipped, staggered setup, 255s at the back, 235s at the front, running on Scandinavian winter tires, studless, Nokia and Hakka Palita R5 in this case. So the pro version has a WLTP range of up to 550 kilometers. That's depending on the equipment you actually get for your car. This specific car with the 20 inch rims and the glass roof and some heavy equipment also has the heat pump, has a WLTP range of 511 kilometers. Charge port placed here at the rear right side of the car goes for all the ID cars in Volkswagen's ID series. When it comes to DC charging, 170 kilowatts of peak speed. I have seen quicker and I'm going to do a range, consumption, charging, acceleration and noise test. And that's the video I'm going to release just after this. So stay tuned for that. This will be the link when that video is available. So back to the charge speed. This is where one of the most important and most interesting updates has occurred on the 2024 model. And that's the battery preconditioning. Finally, Volkswagen has released preconditioning for the ID4. And this is so important. That that means that you can precondition the battery pack, not only for driving dynamics and efficiency, but especially for charging, for fast charging. Without preconditioning of the battery pack, it's impossible to reach the 170 kilowatts and a good charge curve during winter time in cold weather. But from now on, you can charge with the full speed as soon as you activate the preconditioning. The preconditioning can actually be activated manually by pressing a button on the screen, but also by navigating to a charger. So if you preheat for like four to five minutes, you will make sure that you can reach the top speeds all the time. So with preconditioning active, you will make sure to save a lot of time, but also make your long trips more pleasant. Home charging, three-phase support, 11 kilowatts. So to one of my favorite angles of the ID4, and that's the rear end, especially like the rear taillights, three-dimensional multi-layer LED setup with a light bar going through the whole rear end, a big Volkswagen logo. Really Volkswagen-y design, but modern. And I think this will hold up for a while. When it comes to some practical aspects, this one is equipped with powered liftgate. The trunk, or the boot, 543 liters of total boot capacity, a multi-layer floor. This one is removable and you can stow it under for, for more storage. A second layer where a subwoofer is hidden and also some extra storage for some charging cables. I hate this design. Do you know why? Because it's not possible to stow it under. First off, I mean, the look and feel is not great. 
is attached to the to the lid of the of the boot but you can remove it the saddest thing is that you can't hide it and store it away you need to remove it and put it inside the cabin or leave it in your garage so most likely you will remove this one and drive completely without it or forget it outside ikea when buying big boxes that's very likely unfortunately so no possibility to hide it underneath the storage floor when it comes to the seats they are split into two parts 40 and 60 and in the middle there is a separate ski latch for storing skis and other long things it's possible to equip the ID4 with a tow hitch with a total tow capacity of 1000 kilograms one ton for the pro rear wheel drive version the lever for extracting the tow hitch is placed here at the right side semi-manual one equipped with rails for easy attachment of roof racks and with a load limit of 75 kilograms so in total a practical car with a tow hitch with roof racks a decent amount of space here at the back foldable seats etc let's move on to the interior and the rear seats front seat adjusted off the my driver position i'm 193 centimeters tall or six foot four and as you see decent amount of leg room for my knees also possible to squeeze under my feet underneath the front seat really good when it comes to thigh support decent thigh support not good not bad comfortable ride here at the back central armrest with three cup holders one small one medium one bigger rubberized for adding some friction the angle of the rear seat is not adjustable so a fixed position decent headroom i'm not touching the headliner even if i stretch out so that's good this one is equipped with the with panoramic glass roof with a sunshade or a curtain that's stored on a roll here at the back fully electric you you operate it from the front that gives you the possibility to to shade away the sun so in total a comfortable ride decent seats decent amount of headroom really nice headrests by the way individual headrests for all three positions adjustable height wise so in y-axis really well cushioned and comfortable to, to rest on when it comes to other convenient features here at the back the mid console is equipped with a small screen for adjusting the temperature zone here at the rear two usb-c ports and two manual air ventilations to adjust the airflow in your desired direction. And when it comes to the materials, look and feel here at the rear, Volkswagen is not known for having the best materials, especially not at the rear seats. That also goes for the ID4. Hard plastics here at the top. Normally this is the zone where you put soft touch materials, but not in the ID4. Also hard touch. The only cushion part where you rest your arm. So that's good at least. Piano black finish at a lot of positions here. Not a fan of that. Looks good, but it's really hard to keep clean and keep free from scratches. Let's jump over to the front and this is where some changes has been implemented. So here at the mid console, a very flat and spartan design mid console with the black piano finish here. Not a fan of that as I mentioned at the rear. Two cup holders, adjustable, also removable. So if you just want a extra storage amount here, you remove this and throw it away. But I, I keep the cup holders, a closable compartment, also possible to, to have cup holders, adjustable, one Qi charger, two USB-C ports, a decent amount of storage here at the mid console at the center. On top of that, two air ventilations. This is new. The hazard lights is actually placed here now and not inside the screen unit or the control unit just underneath the screen and that takes us to one of the bigger updates and that's actually the screen so from now on if you equip it with the big matter pack you get the big screen so this is 12.9 inch updated compared to the 12 inch screen but one of the biggest changes is not only the size as such it's the sliders so the sliders underneath the screen is now backlit and you will actually see them when it's dark outside very important update this has been one of the most annoying features of the id cars earlier so a very welcome update from volkswagen here one of the most important parts we're going to look at the software very soon probably the single most important change 
So some other updates is to be found directly to the left of the main screen, and that's the instrument cluster. Same size, same details, five inch screen, but here to the right, you no more have the gear selector, the diamond selector, is actually placed down below directly on the steering column instead. That's probably due to two reasons. It's easier to build a tier on the steering column, and as the screen grows and has been bigger, the room for switching the gear is probably less and not that convenient. This is in line with all the other new updated cars, the ID7, the ID Buzz, etc. So this is the way to go from Volkswagen. The next change is the steering wheel. At a glance, it looks exactly the same. But if you dissect the details and look at the controls, on both sides, they are updated. So the haptic controls is from now on updated and more logical than before. The earlier version was really annoying, especially the media control. Because then you had to the right side, the media controls, the volume was plus to the right, minus to the left. Makes sense. Skip and toggle songs. Upwards was actually reverse. Downwards was skip forward. Very unlogical. But from now on, you toggle the songs, you shuffle from the right side, the downside, there's specific buttons for that. And the volume is actually moved to the left side. And to the right side, they have added the possibility to turn off and turn on the steering wheel heating. Really nice. So media control in general, voice assistance is also placed here, the new IDA assistance. I'm gonna talk about that soon. To the left, you have the driving aid systems and the volume controls. This is really good updates. Still a bit hard to get used to the controls since they are haptic and you can't use your fingertips to feel the buttons in, the, in, in a good way. You need, oh, most often you need to, to look at the steering wheel until you get the right amount of muscle memory. It will take some time to get used to. Let's look at the dashboard and the materials at the dashboard. Most further to the front, we have the ID light strip. That's the light that communicates with you, for instance, when navigating or when, when using the, the driver assist functionality, keeps you awake, gives you some, some nice illustrations to get your attention. In front of that, you have the head-up display. This car is not equipped with the, with the augmented reality version. This is equipped with the normal standard version. Works good, but lacks a bit of details. The materials as such, hard plastics here, most further into the front, surrounding the head-up display. Soft touch with some nice stitching. This is more like rubberized materials. Some aluminum inlays here at the front. Hidden ambient lighting, equipped with 30 different colors. If you go for that, that's not standard. But all in all, a lot of hard plastics. This compartment is also hard plastic from this part and down is completely equipped with hard plastics doesn't give you that premium feeling as you get in the ID7 for instance but I mean the ID7 is a more premium car and that interior feels more carry more Volkswagen-ish more premium compared to this one this one is is light it is not over flooded with buttons or or design details is is a fairly clean interior if you like that when it comes to the door sides soft touch here at the top compared to the hard touch at the rear hard plastics here cushion armrests uh, so fairly comfortable to rest your arms at the piano black finish also goes for this part that's sad when it comes to, to the door pockets decent amount of storage here you have a button for operating the, the boots that's nice the power lift gate this one is equipped with the Harman Kardon sound system. That's the premium sound system, comes with some specific packages. So that's not standard, it's extra. I have nothing specific to complain about when it comes to the sound system. It has decent bass with a subwoofer placed at the boot. Good details in the mids and highs. It is not a high-end system in that manner. It's more of a high quality mid-range system, I would say. But I would recommend you to go for the Harman Kardon system instead of the standard system, because the standard system lacks uh, sound quality. This one has a lot better sound than, than the normal one. So probably worth the upgrade. 
So to one of the biggest and most exciting, if not the most exciting part of the updated Volkswagen ID4, and that's the screen, and especially, more specifically, the software in it. I mean, I have the Volkswagen ID3 and have been driving and testing older Volkswagens in the ID series, and I must say that it's so much better, so much less frustration compared to my Volkswagen ID3 that's running the old software. So much more functions, so much more clever design and layout, quicker, smarter, more customizable than ever. Such a big leap in the right direction from Volkswagen here. This is this was really a one of the biggest Achilles heels, one of the biggest pain points for me. Let's have a quick look. First off, the layout consists of three different parts. The big central area is the dynamic parts. All the content is showed in that big area, the central part of the screen. At the bottom, you have a static control part, control panel for the climate controls. So you can shortcuts to, to the climate control, activate, deactivate it, seat heating, shortcut, a home button. Uh, so that's a static area. On top you have another static area, but this is more semi-static, where you can add your own shortcuts. Most further to the left you have the app drawer, a link to uh, a shortcut to all the applications available in your car. Next to that you have the car settings, where you navigate directly to the settings of your car. And to the right of the car settings you have four individually customizable shortcuts. And this is how you add the shortcuts. You long press it and you choose your shortcut or your liking. Probably, hopefully, the four functions you use most. This car has support for wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Works really flawless in full screen with full functionality. So on top of that bar, you also have a slider, an app drawer that you draw down with shortcuts also customizable by long pressing one of the icons you can actually set your flavor to that drawer and add the functions the shortcuts to what you use most next thing that's customizable is actually the screen the main area the desktop area with all the widgets this kind of reminds me of a old android system or a classic dashboard we add widgets after your liking and after your user behavior. You long press it to change the actual content of that specific part. So you, by long pressing you can choose another function, another setting, another view. Okay, so if you long press it you can also add more pages to slide between. You can have in total up to four different pages and each page can be customized after your liking your layout there's three different layouts to choose between and every tile on that layout is fully customizable for your need of functionality so all in all it's so customizable so easy to use that you will not lack any functionality or usability i think it's really nice and easy to use volkswagen has also incorporated the new ida system ida stands for id assistant as simple as that. Also powered by ChatGPT, so it's not only for internal commands or information like changing the cabin temperature, activating the seat heater, etc. It also is connected to the internet so you can ask it more uh, open questions, more intelligent questions to get more good answers. So for instance, I have replaced the activation key, the activation name, that's normally hello IDA or hello ID to it's only electric. What is glass made of? According to glassforum.org, while there are many different types of glass, most share a similar basic composition, consisting of three main ingredients, silica, soda ash and limestone. Silica, ash and limestone. Easy. So now we know that. So as you see, works good. You can use your own voice command to activate it. It's a lot more intelligent than the old system. All fine and dandy. Let's take this car for a drive. Look at the driving dynamics, like the suspension. 
equipped with the DCC system, so adaptive dampers, the dry modes, the regen. How pleasant is this car to drive? And how much more fun is it to drive with the bigger motor at the back? Let's try that out. Let's check the dry modes. And as I said earlier, there's four different dry modes, or actually three different dry modes, and a customizable dry mode. Eco, Comfort, Sport. On top of that, Individual. Individual is as it sounds. Set it to whatever you like. And there's a lot of settings. Everything from the dampers, active dampers, 12 different levels. The steering, you can set it to Sport, Comfort. The drive uh, unit, Eco, Sport, Comfort. The exterior engine sound, that's the artificial sound from the outside. There is two different sound profiles, Comfort or Sport. The ACC, you can set it to, that's adaptive cru cruise control. Comfort, Sport, Echo, light assistance and air conditioning. So there is a Echo or Comfort mode to the air conditioning. So let's start with the Eco mode. And that's the mode that saves you energy and extends your actual range when driving longer trips. What it does is actually limits the output or the immediate output when you press the accelerator or floor it. You get a more tame acceleration curve, picks up slower, and also the AC sets to, com uh, to eco instead of comfort, so it saves energy when heating up the cabin. That's about it. Since there's only one motor, only rear wheel doesn't have anything to switch off other than that. So when I try to accelerate, it still picks up good, but there is a slight difference compared to comfort and sport. When, for instance, switching to sport, it's, it's more aggressive. It's more direct and seems to give you all the power immediately instead of slowly picking up and putting out more uh, horsepower. Another difference is the suspension. So on Eco, it's more to the comfortable level, so softer dampers compared to Sport. The good thing when you have a individual mode is that you don't need to fiddle around with the different dry modes. Just use individual, put it in your preferable settings. I set the air conditioning to Eco if it's not too hot or not too cold outside, because that's more than enough and works well. I, will, I always drive it on individual because I think that's the perfect blend. And I must say, it, it is a huge difference between this 286 horsepower setup compared to the 204 horsepower setup in the older versions. It is so much more powerful, so much more snappy, so much more fun to drive. And on top of that, you can actually switch off the ECS system, the anti-spin system, the traction system, the traction control, you can set it to sport. When you set it to sport, it is actually more engaging to drive. It's called ECS system, activated or ECS sport. And when I set it to ECS sport, it actually says here on the instrument cluster, the five inch instrument cluster, that it is turned off. Let's just try the traction control in sports mode and see if it throws back the rear end of the car. Let's see. Let's see, come on. <laughs> yes, it works. So much more fun to drive with the traction control off or in sports mode. You can really utilize that extra horsepower. That 80 extra horsepower is really making sense with the traction control off. So much more fun. 230 newton meters more than the older version. That's a lot. That's like adding a new, new motor to the car. Another one. The older version really felt too heavy for its power. And I've said that about the Volkswagen ID, ID Buzz too. Too big of a car for that horsepower, especially when driving an electric add some more power, you will still not waste more energy if you're driving economically, if you drive, if you have a very soft right foot, doesn't matter, you, you, but you still have that extra power. For instance, on highways, when passing other cars, taking over them, 
you need that extra amount of power. It's necessary for such a heavy car. I mean, 2.2 tons. The next thing is the region. And this is still one of the points that's keeping me questioning Volkswagen's take on electric cars. I mean, why not do a proper one pedal driving? There's two modes, D and B. D stands for drive, B stands for brake. So when set to B, or so when set to D, and you letting go of the accelerator, it coasts. As all other ID cars, it just coasts. No regeneration at all. But this car is only rear-wheel drive, only one permanent magnet motor at the back, giving you a limited amount of region. But it also feels like Volkswagen is holding back the amount of region and adding the last amount of region when braking. So if I just let go of the accelerator, as I do now, it doesn't come to a full stop. It's rolling. Five kilometers per hour, keeps rolling. So no one pedal driving support. That's disappointing. I really hope that they will add that and change their minds about that setting. I think it's necessary to have. Let's just test the active dampers, the DCC, dynamic chassis control, switch it from the most comfortable mode to the sportiest mode now and the most comfortable the softest mode and let's try out the body roll it is soft it is very soft on this setting not my cup of tea very leaning in the corners a lot of body roll let's move on to the sports mode immediately stiffens up a lot less body roll, the car feels much lighter than it does in comfort mode, but still a lot of amount of, of body roll, not too stiff. The biggest difference is actually in the vertical travel. The car gets a lot more harsh on sport mode, on uneven surfaces than it is on comfort mode. I think that's the biggest difference. It is a bit more stiffer in the body roll, side rolling is a bit less in sports mode. But I don't think it's uncomfortable in any way when driving it on sport. I don't really need that extra amount of comfort, so sport mode it is for me. But I really like Volkswagen's DCC system, I have mentioned that before. It is a good damper system, a good solution for you that want to adjust the, the amount of comfort and sportiness, depending on what you like. Keep in mind that this is extra. So I'll try to summarize the driving experience. Suddenly the car feels a lot lighter, a bit smaller, and that's thanks to the sport chassis, the, the DCC system, and the stronger motor at the rear actually helps you to, to think that the car is smaller because you have more than enough power now. We have been looking at the exterior, going through some facts, looked at the actual changes compared to the older version, driving the car, testing the driving dynamics, talking about things like the suspension, etc. So what's my final view on the ID4? The updated ID4, but let's be honest. Until now, you haven't seen me try the old ID4. And why is that? I didn't think it really met my expectations for a primary car. For a secondary car, it would be good. But as a primary car, it would not. That's why I have the ID3, because we have that as a secondary car. And why is that? I mean, first off, the older version has, is lacking power, at least if you go for the rear wheel drive version. The second thing, and that's the really important thing, that's the battery preconditioning. I would never go for a car without proper battery preconditioning, if that's your primary car and you're planning to go longer trips. 
you really must have preconditioning. At least if you live in countries like the Nordics. It's too cold. Half of the year you will lack charging speeds. You will sit at the chargers at least half an hour extra every time. That's not okay. So until now, that was the case. I couldn't really recommend the ID4. I don't want to whine about bad cars. That's why I waited for this one, for this update. From now on, I can with confidence say that I can really recommend the ID4. It's a great package. With the extra amount of horsepower, you have more than sufficient power now. It's so much more fun to drive, so much more engaging. It's also more efficient. You can precondition the battery, which means that during winter, you can really charge the car quick. I'm doing a range, acceleration, charging and noise test of this car. Don't miss that one. I put the link here above when it's uh, available. So stay tuned for that. But with the preconditioning, you really get a decent charge curve, even in cold weather. That means that you can travel longer trips with less hassle, less wait times. And on top of all that, on top of the charging, on top of the new motor at the rear, higher efficiency, you also have the new screen. And inside the operating system is so much evolved. This is like a total new generation of software. It's so much better. And I'm so happy to see that Volkswagen is really working on evolving, getting better, incrementally evolving their cars, adding stuff. I guess this will be available with even a bigger battery later on, probably very soon with even more range. But this one has decent range, good charging, good software, comfortable ride, especially with the, with the active dampers. Fairly silent cabin, I must say. Can it be as silent as the ID7? Let's see about that. We haven't talked about the price. Starting price of the Pro Edition is 590,000 Swedish crowns or 46,000 euros. That's the starting price of the Pro Edition. This comes with a heat pump in Sweden. In Germany, it doesn't seem to come with a heat pump as a standard. So if you add all the things that this car has, heat pump, comfort package, the bigger rims, the azul blue exterior color, it costs 650,000 Swedish crowns around that ballpark. So a bit more expensive, around 59,000 euros. So it gets a bit more expensive if you start adding on the equipment list. I think that's all for today. I have been talking a lot, as always. Uh, I'm trying to, to express as much as of my feelings, my experience as possible to give you a good understanding of the cars I'm trying. So I hope you enjoy that. And as I always say, three very different aspects and things to do. And as I always say, very important, subscribe, like, and engage. Never stop engaging. If you have any questions, please post them below. If you have any ideas or views on the ID4, please share them with me. What do you think about the car? Is it worth buying now after all the updates? Is this the actual game changing changes to the ID4? I think so. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.